Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. We are at the drag strip. I've got Rob with me again today, and we're getting ready to go to the races. Can you hear them in behind me? They're revving up their engines. All right, you get ready and stay tuned for the race. We'll be coming live here, so I'm getting ready to switch you over down the track. We'll see you in a minute. Here they go! And the Mustangs got them. The Mustang wins the, the race, beat the Challenger, and you saw it live right here. Hey guys, we're coming back. We're talking about the race, and we're down here at a drag strip in Benton, Missouri, and just uh, saw a Mustang put a, was that a challenger? It was a challenger. Just put a challenger in the dust. So I thought about the race, Rob, and you know, we're all kind of in a race. And I thought about, you got those scriptures? Yeah. Let's, let's pull those scriptures up and read them. Go ahead and read uh, that for me. Okay, Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not too swift to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Wow. So the race isn't to the swift. Let's look, look, let's look at 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Go ahead and read that for me. Okay. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, we award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Wow. So the race isn't to the swift, and it talks about that the one that keeps the faith. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. You know, it's so important for us to recognize that this race we're in, this, this race of life, where you know, a lot of times we're trying to come out of the gates and we got it floored, but it's not about, the, the scripture said the race isn't to the swift. It's about being faithful, the one that endures to the end. It says the same shall be saved. You remember the old adage about the tortoise and the hare? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, the tortoise was a slow moving um, uh, competitor. And of course the hare was a fast moving competitor. And uh, everybody thought, just by judging at the two together, that the, the hare would, would win the race. Yeah, no doubt, obvious. no doubt, right? But what happened? Well, the, uh, the rabbit uh, took off and burned all of his energy and got too excited and got uh, distracted. And the tortoise just remained steady. It remained steady on the course. Sure and steady wins the race. You know, I thought about sometimes the way we approach God in our life. And, you know, I mean, I remember when I first got saved and I, man, I was excited and I'm still excited, but I've seen a lot of folks, Rob, that get excited and then that excitement kind of fizzles out because they don't have enough in the engine to keep them going. That's right. And it's important to make sure that you've got the right amount of fuel in here, right? You know, I've been to some drag races before and they're coming out hot and heavy and I've watched folks blow the engine up coming out of the start. You ever see that? All of a sudden, man, they'll, they'll floor it and you, and you see that fire coming out and boom! And man, the engine's gone. And a lot of times I've seen folks talk about, you know, God, man, I'm excited about God, woo! And then a few days later, and it's over. And that's not what he's after. He Look, he wants us excited and we've got a reason to be excited, right? But he's looking for faithfulness, being sure and steady. Have you ever, uh, you know, been in uh, snow or get, get stuck in mud? Oh, yeah. Who, who hasn't? <laughs> so when you get stuck in, if you're in snow or you get stuck in mud and you're floorboarding it, what happens? Well, you just, you just begin to sink. <laughs> exactly. The, the, the more we're revving that engine up, 
the more we're sinking in the mar and the or in the clay and the mud where we're at. But the way to get out, you know, when you get in a situation where you you feel yourself being bogged down, what you have to do is you have to pull that gear down in low. Mm -hmm. And it's not about, well, man, I'm, you know, if I put it in low, I'm not going to win the race. Hear me. You've got to be able to stay on the track to win the, win the race. And if you get off the track and you get bogged down, you know, Scripture talks about cares of this life, that we can easily get distracted. We have to drop her in low. In other words, drop down on your knees, <laughs> get in low gear, get in a place where you can touch God. And as you begin to, when you drop that car in low, it gives it all kinds of pulling power. power. And so now you're not just spinning your wheels, right? That's right. You're, you're pulling. You, now you've got big trucks, right? You've had big trucks. So have you ever pulled somebody out? Yeah, and I've never done it going 60 mile an hour. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, I'm about to win the race going backwards. So Don't get distracted. So, <laughs> so what do you have to do? Share with us what you have to do when you're trying to help somebody else get back on the road. Well, I think the most important thing is is to pace yourself. You know, just like in any race or pulling exactly. somebody out, you have to go at a slow and steady uh, uh, pace. And uh, that's the most important thing. Just like uh, Brother Rick had said a while ago, if you... Uh, come right out of the, the gun. I used to run track years ago, and uh, we, we saw this all the time, where they would just take off and run a two-mile race and try to run it in, in, in five seconds. You can't do it. And they would burn themselves out really fast. So we always learned that people that pace themselves could make it to the end. It's just like pulling somebody out of mud or whatever. You have to pace yourself, and you've got you've to gotta take it slow, drop it down low, because that's where your power comes from. I remember when I was in high school, I was never you know, a fast runner. And, you know, and I, I remember when I was like, I think I was 12 years old and I was like five foot five and weighed 185 pounds. So there was a lot of me to go around. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't fast. And, and I remember we were in gym class and we had to run a 600 yard dash. Now, those of you that remember how far that is, you know, that's a, that's a good little trek especially if you're not used to running at all. And, you know, I remember everybody lined up and the whistle blew the, the or the, the whistle, the coach blew the whistle. And when he did, we took off and man, I take off and I'm leaving all these skinny guys in my dust. And I'm thinking, yeah, boy, I'm going to win this race. And I go around, I make that first backstop and there are four backstops we have to circle. And man, by the time I got halfway to the second backstop, everybody's passing me. Until finally, I'm kind of around that third backstop. I'm the last one. And, man, a lot of the guys by now have finished the race. And I'm still trying to finish the race. And for a moment, I just thought about just walking off the track. I thought, man, I can't win now. And I just thought about giving up. But I, I misunderstood something. That winning isn't about coming in first. It's about crossing the finish line. That's right. And when you cross the finish line, you're a winner. Now, I'll never forget, Rob, that, uh, you know, when I was so discouraged, man, it felt like somebody had a knife in my side, twisting it. And all of a sudden, I heard the guys that had passed me, and they weren't laughing at me, and they weren't making fun of me, but they started yelling, come on, Rick, you can do it. Come on. Man, something inside of me just, I got like a second wind and, and I thought, I can do it. I can do it. And I ran and crossed that finish line. Those guys jumped on me and you would have thought I was the first one to have come across that line. But they were rejoicing with me because I had finished. Do you understand? You may not feel like you're where you want to be right now. And you may feel like, man, there's so much ground I need to make up. And you're looking down the track and you're thinking, it's too far down. As a matter of fact, just take a look. We, we look down that track and all we see is a long strip of road and we feel like, man, I can't do this. This is too far. This is beyond my ability. But it's not beyond God's ability. And Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Remember, the race isn't to the swift. 
I fought a good fight. I finished, I've kept the faith. I finished the race. What's he saying? He's saying, keep going. You're going to make it. Keep going. Don't give up. Just take it slow and steady. You may, the, the, everybody may pass you by, but you mark my word, if you stay faithful to God, the day's coming when all those people that blew past you are going to be watching you pass them and they're going to be looking to you to help them get back on track. That's right. I'm telling you, God's got a group of people mm -hmm. that he's called, especially for this time that we're in, people that are faithful, people that won't give up easily, that don't burn all their gas up at the beginning. Remember the virgins? What was it? It was the oil. The oil. How, five wise and five foolish. What happened to them, Rob? Well, there were five wise that uh, they brought extra oil because they didn't know how much longer they had to wait. So they were wise. The foolish virgins showed up with their lamps, and they just barely had enough. And then when the bridegroom came, um, they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough to... They uh, burned out, right? Them. Yeah. And uh, so they, they were told to go back into the city and go buy from them that sold. And the, the five that were wise, they got to go in under the bridegroom. Right. And when the five foolish came back, the door was closed. And he said, you can't come in. Look, he's he loves you. He cares about you. And he's going to give you exactly what you need to finish this race. So I want you to start your engines. Let's hear them. Rev them up and make up your mind that I'm not going to burn out and I'm not going to peel rubber. I'm going to finish this race. I'm going to cross that finish line and hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We want to pray for you today. Are you ready, Rob? Let's just agree together. Father, we thank you for those that are watching today. God, we just ask that you smile on them in a special way. Father, let them see that checkered flag drop, God, and let them know in their heart that now is the time. It's not time to sit back and say, oh, I can't enter this race. I can't do this. I'm not able. Lord, you're more than enough. Your grace is sufficient for us. So I just ask right now in Jesus' name that you rev up their engine, God. Get a hold of their heart and let them feel your love grip them. And Father, let them know, God, that when they feel weak and they feel like they're running out of strength, that you're going to renew their strength, God, and they're going to mount up with wings like an eagle, that they'll run and not be weary and walk and not faint. We thank you, Father, because you're there to make sure we finish this race right. in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Don't forget it's time to cross the finish line. Just keep going. Don't give up. Don't get off track. Rev those engines up, but slow and steady wins the race. Be faithful in all things and you'll find that God is faithful to you. Amen. Amen. We love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.